Hello, and welcome to today's online intelligence briefing, focusing on Russia's increasing military influence in Africa. My name is Antonia Ward. I'm the Senior Africa Analyst in the Military Capabilities Team, and I will be presenting today's briefing titled Russian Influence in African Armed Forces. It's important to first highlight that Russian political and military involvement in Africa is not new. The Soviet Union was involved in Africa, specifically the Horn of Africa, through infrastructure assistance, military assistance, financial assistance and educational endeavours. Infrastructure-wise, the USSR sent engineers and technical specialists to African countries to help develop their infrastructure. Militarily, there is evidence of Russian support and involvement in civil wars in Angola, Mozambique and the Ogaden War between Ethiopia and Somalia. This is connected to the USSR's political agenda, seeing an opportunity to encourage African nations to adopt communism following the end of colonialism from Western powers, including the UK, France and Italy. Many African nations still have Russian military platforms acquired in the Soviet era. This can be seen in the case of Egypt in the 1950s, which acquired MIG-15 fighters, IL-28 bombers and T-34 tanks. In the 1970s, the USSR focused on arms exports to Libya and Algeria, among others. Financially, the USSR offered aid to Africa in the form of loans, short-term credits, trade credits for governments and scholarship programmes. The USSR also invested in educational ties with Africa. In 1950, it established the Patrice Lumumba People's University in Moscow, with the express aim to help developing nations. Between 1949 and 1991, approximately 60,000 Africans travelled to the USSR for educational purposes. One of the clearest indications of increased Russian involvement in African states and their armed forces is the Russia-Africa Summit held in Sochi between 23rd to 24th of October 2019. The summit was attended by representatives of all 54 African nations, including 43 African heads of state. The summit was co-hosted by Egyptian President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi. Russia's state arms exporter, Rossoboran Export, was also present at the summit. During the summit, Putin wrote off $20 billion worth of debt owed by African nations and also stated that Russia would protect African countries' sovereignty. The summit resulted in a declaration formed which included promises of political cooperation, security cooperation, including terrorism and narcotics, to prevent an arms race in outer space, trade, legal, scientific, technical, humanitarian and information cooperation, and also environmental protection cooperation. The political cooperation element of the declaration emphasises working within the UN and also deepening the BRICS Africa partnership. At the same time as the summit was occurring, a symbolic statement was made with the landing of the TU-160 Blackjack bombers arriving in South Africa, during which talks were held between the Russian Aerospace Group and the South African Air Force. $12.5 billion worth of deals were signed during the summit, including arms export deals and military cooperation agreements. The infographic displayed here demonstrates Russia's influence in Africa since 2010. Here, we can see there have been over 20 military cooperation agreements signed since 2010, which is a substantial amount. The vast majority of these cooperation agreements have been signed in the last five years since 2015. 18 African nations have received Russian arms since 2010, which is a third of all African nations. As you can see, this includes some of Africa's most powerful militaries, including Egypt, Algeria, Morocco, Nigeria, Sudan and Angola. Russia has also started to become involved in military exercises. Here the infographic shows that it has conducted these with Egypt and South Africa. Both of these exercises have occurred in the past four years, with iterations most recently held in 2019. In 2018, Russia announced the agreed establishment of a military logistics base in Eritrea. Military cooperation agreements, which are displayed here, can cover aspects including arms deals, training assistance and equipment service and support deals. 
One aspect of Russian influence most noted by Western media in recent years is the presence of Russian mercenaries in African nations. The most well-known Russian private military company is the Wagner Group, which is believed to be owned by Yevgeny Prigozhin and led by Dmitry Utkin, who is Prigozhin's head of security. Prigozhin is a businessman with ties to the Kremlin. It is important to note that the Kremlin denies links to private military companies, including the Wagner Group. We can see mercenary involvement in the Central African Republic and Mozambique in particular. So here we have two case studies, the Central African Republic and Mozambique. Firstly, looking at the Central African Republic. In December 2017, the Russian government sent five military and 170 civilian trainers to Bangui, the capital of the Central African Republic. The president, Faustin Oshange Touadera, requested more assistance. His national security advisor is now Valery Zakharov, a Russian national who was a former member of the St. Petersburg police. Russia, in fact, brokered a peace deal between the government and 14 rebel groups in 2019. American officials calculate that there are over 400 Russian mercenaries stationed in the Central African Republic. A diplomatic source informed Jaynes in September 2019 that it was common knowledge the mercenaries have direct ties to Moscow and in fact include some serving members of the Russian army. There have also been accusations that despite the mercenaries being present to assist the Central African Republic's military, they are in fact partnering with rebels to obtain diamonds illegally. Looking at Mozambique, similar events have taken place. The Mozambique government appealed to Russia to assist against the Cabo Delgado insurgency in the north of the country. An estimated 200 private military contractors from Russia were deployed to the country, assisted by Hind helicopter gunships and MI-17 aircraft. The Wagner Group was based in Nakala, having started its deployment operating along the Mozambique-Tanzania border. However, there have been a number of Russian casualties reported in Mozambique, including the death of five private military contractors in an ambush on the 27th of October 2019, and a dozen private military contractors killed in a further attack in November 2019. Now I will discuss Russian arms exports to Africa. As you can see from the graph below, there has been a marked increase in the percentage of Russian worldwide arms exports to Africa in the period 2000 to 2018. According to Rossoboran Export, the state arms exporter, Russia aimed to deliver $4 billion worth of arms to Africa in 2019. In the period 2000 to 2004, only 4% of Russian arms exports went to Africa. In 2005 to 2009, this markedly increased by 10% to 14% of all Russian arms exports going to Africa, making the African continent Russia's second largest arms customer. In the period 2010 to 2014, this decreased slightly to 12%. However, there has been a 5% increase in the period 2014 to 2018, in which 17% of Russian worldwide arms exports went to Africa. Russia accounted for 49% of total arms exports to North Africa, compared to the US at 15%, and China at 10%. So, to summarise, Russia's influence within Africa's armed forces centres around military cooperation deals, which have provided mercenary assistance and arms deals, participation in military exercises, and the establishment of a military logistics base in Eritrea. Why is Russia increasing its military influence? There are two core reasons. Firstly, to increase its power on the world stage by building alliances with various African nations to support its political agenda. 
Secondly, Russia has sought strategic trade-offs in its policy towards the continent, whereby it provides military assistance and support in exchange for access to natural and raw materials and oil and energy deals with African nations. The reasons for Russia's increased influence in African armed forces, therefore, are primarily political and economic. It is clear that Russian involvement in Africa is on an increased trajectory. Whether this will a ultimately increase its influence in intergovernmental organisations and advance its political agenda, and b provide significant economic opportunities is something that will need to be closely monitored. In light of recent Russian and Chinese initiatives on the African continent, US Africa Command, known as AFRICOM, has voiced its concerns about the strategic impact these recent trends could have for American interests on the continent. It is therefore continuing to develop its own strong relationships with African nations and prioritise the continent for the increased strategic competition it envisions in Africa post-2020. 